So we've seen some real mixed performances from financial markets over the month of April. So let's start with growth assets. And the recent rally in markets has been concentrated around a basket of very large technology stocks, whilst the rest of the market has moved sideways over the period. The rally on Wall Street has seen US valuations at the top end of their range, and they've been trading between 15 and 18 times expected earnings. Now this means the first quarter earnings season will be watched very closely and a host of big tech names are reporting or about to report. Meta, which is the uh, company behind Facebook and Instagram, have just reported a profit of $5.7 billion for the first quarter of the year. And that actually beat expectations in a period where many jobs were actually cut. Interestingly, in the UK, profit warnings in the first quarter were at the highest rate at any time since before the COVID pandemic. So one of the key factors around corporate profitability is the direction of interest rates. And the consensus is that the next round of central bank meetings in May will probably lead to one more quarter point hike in interest rates. And that will signal the end of this tightening cycle. It's worth remembering the Federal Reserve has raised rates by nearly five percentage points since last year in an effort to control inflation. Now this phase of tightening rates has showed in the latest US GDP numbers, which were released in April, and it showed the economy expanded at an annualized rate of 1.1% in the first quarter of 2023. Now this was actually below expectations and was due to weakness in business investment and housing, both of which are heavily influenced by interest rates. So turning to inflation, UK inflation was higher than expected this month with the headline CPI number remaining in double digits at 10.1% year on year in March. And this leaves concerns about how stick inflation will be in the UK, particularly core inflation, which excludes the more volatile food and energy prices. Looking at factor performance through April, small cap and growth were the relative laggards, and over the month, it was momentum that was the best performer. Turning to defensive assets, UK government bond prices actually fell in April as worries over the global banking crisis subsided over the month and investors went from being risk off to risk on again. The 10 year yield actually reflects that interest rates still have further to rise for now at least. So in summary, financial markets are likely to continue to trade in the near term with some volatility as they continue to look for signs that inflation is under control we're at a peak in the interest rate cycle and companies can continue to operate profitably in this new era of higher interest rates.